If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman, spiritual business coach. I'm here as always with my best friend in Boquete, Catherine Loranger. And we are, and she's a spiritual business coach too. And we're going to stop being excited that I get her name right. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and so throwing you for a loop, I can see I that. Know, I know. <laughs> so one of the things that we run into all the time in business coaching is this sort of analysis paralysis and other sort of resistance patterns that people go through. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. I've seen it in a lot of places. I'm sure you've seen it in a lot of places. You know, it's this getting ready to get ready thing that happens with the analysis paralysis, right? It's like, oh, well, I won't be ready until this is done and that is done and that is done and that is done. And, or I can't make a decision in which direction I want to go, right? It's this, well, should I do this or should I do that? Or maybe I should do both at the same, ne the answer, by the way, is never both at the same time. Don't ever do that. Okay. Both at the same time is not the right answer. Pick one. And then that way we don't have to go anywhere because we are already entrenched in the decision-making process. I'm doing something. I'm deciding, right? Yeah. I was saying, what it, what it does is it tricks us into thinking that we're doing something because, well, I'm, I'm analyzing, I'm getting more information. I'm making an informed decision. And yes, it's important to make an informed decision, but there's a point where you have enough information and you just need to decide. So when we're in this analysis paralysis, it tricks us. It fools us into thinking that we're actually making progress when in reality, it's like we're walking forward, but we're on a treadmill. We're not actually going anywhere. Right. But it, it, it fools our kind of belief systems and patterns into thinking that we are doing something. But the reality is, is that we're not actually yeah. making significant progress. And for all of you Virgos out there who feel like you have to know it all in order to make a decision, just so you know, you will never know it all. Okay. Until you're done. And until you're done. And, and hindsight is of course, 2020, but yeah. in hindsight, you see a lot of things you did not see beforehand. And so 80% is probably more than enough is, is all, almost always more than enough. 70% is usually significantly enough. You know, I find that if I know 70% of what's what I need to know, I can make a good decision. And if I miss something, well, I probably wouldn't have known it no matter what. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you have 70% of the information, you're probably good. If you've got 80%, you are definitely good, right? Mm -hmm. Because nobody has more than that. You can't have more than that because there are some things you will never know until after the fact. Exactly. Until you actually take a step, right? Like right. some of that data you're not going to have. And, and so kind of related to analysis paralysis, there's something called the, the speed of implementation, speed of implementation. And so there is just a huge amount of power in when you get an idea and insight, an intuitive hit, a download guidance, like whatever you want to call it to take action fast because, and we've talked about intuition and working with intuition in other episodes. And so when you get those intuitive things, the paralysis analysis or analysis paralysis stops you from taking action on it, where the universe is trying to like support you and guide you. So that speed of implementation is actually going to help you create some forward momentum. And then you can, you can kind of assess and, and steer as you're going along. Right. So like, I think it's like planes are off course 95% of the time. Mm -hmm. When they're on autopilot, they're like off course, like just, just like hear this, they're off course 95% of the time. It's this constant course correction, course correction, course correction, micro corrections. So it's the same thing for you as you take action and move forward in a direction. 
Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I'm kind of the queen of speed of implementation to the point where sometimes I implement before I've even thought it all the way through, which is probably not my best call, but generally it works out for me like remarkably well. And, and in fact, it's so funny because it's so funny you said that because I have a JV partner right now that I started this podcast with, and she, she's the one working the behind the scenes stuff, getting all the, getting us known, doing the contest, doing the whole thing. Right. And she's managing the whole back end team. And when we started talking about this, I was like, okay. And I went bang. And I just immediately started recording episodes and getting things going. And you know, I had the whole thing laid out. And we were a month, month and a half pre pre-recorded before she ever got everything ready on her end. And she she said to me, in 24 years of doing this, she has never had anybody implement as quickly as I have. And, you know, that I kind of left her team flat footed because it was going so fast. And I was like, oh, this is sort of my normal state of being. <laughs> it's ready, fire, aim, right? It's like, get it out the door. And then you can figure out exactly which way to point it. Because as long as it's in the door, it's doing nothing, right? Mm-hmm. If it's in my door, it is doing fuck all, right? And ah. so I want it out into the world. And when it hits the world, then I start to see how it's re- being responded to. And I can adjust accordingly. You know, like I thought, oh, it'll be super easy to outsource the the Thursday thoughts episodes on this podcast. And I was like, oh, they're just going to use stuff I've done before, whatever, whatever. But I have a policy. If I'm going to outsource something, I do it myself for a few for a few times before I outsource it. So I know how much time it takes. I know what it takes to do it. I can train the person to do it the way I want it done the whole nine yards. And so I did it for the first, I don't know, like eight or 10 episodes. And I'm like, oh my God, this takes freaking forever. It takes an hour to, to, to get the snippets down and then an hour to find the right video to put on top of the snippets. And then it's just exhausting. I hate this, right? For like five to 12 minutes worth of topics. And I'm like, okay, we're not going to do it this way anymore. And so I started doing video from Facebook lives or from my podcast before the, the Spiritual podcast. And And now my students are starting to come in with videos. And so it's, it's a lot easier. It's a lot faster, but I wouldn't have known that until I started actually doing it. Right. If I had just said, Oh yes, this is what I'm going to do. I think maybe I'll do it this way. I don't know. But if you do it, you figure it out and you go, wow, that is unsustainable. So, you know, this is the sort of thing that I'm talking about. You know, that the tap in Tuesdays, on the other hand, are super easy to create, right? They're super fun and easy for me. And they're 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 like light and easy. And yet everybody is saying, oh my God, I love these, right? So you just, until you put something out into the world, you don't know how it's going to be received. And so from that perspective, I want to just say that it's it's important to stop trying to think you're going to know the answer when the answer isn't inside your head, it's outside, right? You know, we spend a lot of time in the Monday episodes and and a lot of time in these episodes talking about, we have to get inside, do your work inside, do your work inside. But when you're talking about launching something, it's all about the outside, right? I mean, you, not to say that you don't need to get aligned in yourself, but if you don't put it out in the world, you have no idea what's actually going to happen. You never know. Just, I just want to put a caveat on that too, right? So we've talked about the panic pivot, I think before, is that you also, what you don't want to be doing is launching every single idea you have, because then you're not ever going to get traction on one thing. So you actually like, you need that, you have like this kind of idea, you have a concept, you're getting like, you know, kind of downloads and insights and intuitive hits on, on how to, how to launch that idea, but you're not launching, you know, like something that's completely separate and then dropping it and then launching something that's completely separate and dropping it. You're actually having this follow through with it so that you can get that feedback and look at those metrics and see what's actually going to be working with it. Yes. Yes. I, that's a great clarification because what I'm talking about is once I made the commitment to doing the podcast itself, then it was about learning how the elements of the podcast work and yes. getting those in yes. place and, and optimizing yes. those processes, not yes. about, you know, oh, is this whole podcast going to work? No, no, no. I committed to this podcast, this yeah. podcast, it's, I committed. Yeah. Don't be a squirrel yeah. at a rave either. Don't be a squirrel yes. at a rave. Yeah. 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 So, Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. so that's one resistance pattern. Another Mm -hmm. resistance pattern 
is, and we're going to talk about, there are two other resistance patterns that we're going to reference today and talk about in full episodes coming up. One of which is perfectionism. And, you know, it's got to be perfect before it can go out the door that we're going to talk about that in an episode coming up. Another, per, another resistance pattern is procrastination. Oh, I'll get to that tomorrow or later, or, oh, it's such a big project, right? That's another one we're going to talk about in a full episode after that one. So after the perfectionism one, so those are two other patterns and those two patterns are both avoidance patterns right? They're, they're ways that we avoid doing it. Right. And so, um, is this, so is this one, right? Yeah. The this one too. Paralysis, like all of the resistance patterns are patterns that are going to keep you from taking action because when you're taking action, you're stepping outside of that comfort zone and the comfort zone is just the, the edge of the life that you've known so far. So it's the edge of the results you've had in your business and your personal life. And so anytime you start to think about or conceptualize or consider taking a step outside that comfort zone, your, your resistance, pa resistance patterns, your self-identity. I mean, there's like lots of different language for it, your paradigms, your subconscious mind. They're all going to, to kind of act up in different ways to keep you from taking the action. And so one of, one of the other ways that it shows up, Kelly, and we haven't, we haven't kind of talked about this yet, is the DEF CON. So that's where you can go into like a full on panic attack. And it's where if you've, you know, you've, you've, you've not procrastinated, you've let go of perfectionism, you have taken action in spite of the analysis paralysis and your internal resistances, your patterns, your paradigms are like, holy shit, you know, she, he, they are actually going to do this now. Like we better turn up the volume on this. And it can feel like a panic attack. You feel like, you know, you're going to make a phone call. It's like cold sweats. It can, it's, it's intense. Right. And so when you hit that and any of these resistance patterns, when you know them, it's actually like a really good sign because it's a sign that you're in growth. It's a sign that you're actually at the edge of what you've created so far for your life. So when you're noticing these things come up, I always say to my clients, say, give yourself a big old high five, right? I'm a rock star for noticing this because yeah. they're running the show anyway. Yeah. For me, it's my knees will go out because mm -hmm. knees are all about forward movement, right? So my knees will start to give me all sorts of hell. They're just like, oh, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to move. Ow, ow. I just, I, I, I picked up my leg. Ow, it hurts. You know, it's, uh -huh. it's, my knees go out and there's no good reason. No inflammation going on, no injuries, no nothing. Just my knees go out. And yeah. that's my, my body going, ah! right? That's that DEF CON you were talking about, right? Uh -huh. And I just go, Oh, look at that. I also have dreams of being chased, mm. usually by governmental forces or people trying to pull me down or things like this. I have these dreams of being like held back and, you know, chased and pulled, pulled back. And there's like all this drama in my dreams. Wow. Yeah. So what happens is if you go through enough of these, you start to recognize what the patterns are. Yes. This is the value of keeping a journal is that yeah. when you keep a journal, especially like a dream journal and things like that, but you can go back and look and say, okay, at this time I was going through this massive up level. What, what, what experiences were I, was I having my knees go out? My, I'm having these dreams and you know, whatever, whatever. Right. And, um, <clears throat> that becomes a, an indicator for you of when you're going through it again in the future. So yeah. It's also the power of working with a mentor or a coach, right? Is that when we're going through these things, it feels like it's just us. It, it, you know, it can just feel like it surrounds us. It's overwhelming. We don't know what to do. And so when you're working with your coach or your mentor, you've got someone else who can actually kind of normalize the experience for you and say like, Hey, this is actually, this is what's going on. And it's a good sign. And this is how we're going to get you through it. Right. And then when you recognize it and come up, when it comes up again, this is how we're going to help you calibrate your nervous system so that you can take the step that you need to take to move forward with the action. Yeah, absolutely. So mm -hmm. the short answer is if in doubt, just do it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's because these are avoidance patterns and avoidance patterns are solved by yeah. just doing it. And yeah. so if in doubt, if, if you've, if you're not sure if you've got enough information, you do have enough information. If you know you don't have enough information, then you may not. But if you're mm -hmm. not sure if you do, you definitely do. Okay. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, that's, that's just the nature of the beast. And yeah. so, you know, just pull the trigger, do something 
and see what happens, right? Yeah. Now, don't go waiting for the universe to put the stamp of approval on your forehead. We've talked about that before in the panic yeah. pivot one. And yeah. if, if you don't know what we're talking about, go back to the panic pivot one and you will understand. But, you know, make a commitment. If you can't make a commitment for at least a year, don't do it because it takes at least a year to get everything running copacetic and moving forward and whatever, whatever, whatever on a, on a project. That's just the nature of the beast. So commit for a year and then take the information that you get from the information that, that, you know, from the things that you send out and adjust, 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 adjust your course until you get where you're going. Just like a plane along, on autopilot. Along the way, not along the, the way. End. Yes. <laughs> like, not, don't wait till the end of the year <laughs> no, no. along the way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Until you, yeah. you finally reach your, your destination. So mm -hmm. just like the plane on autopilot all along the course, right? Okay. So anything else you want to say on this topic? I'm sure everybody by now, if you're listening to this, you've heard of the book, Think and Grow Rich. So that was, it's like a, it's like a pivotal, Napoleon Hill. pivotal, yeah. pivotal, pivotal <laughs> self-help book. So Napoleon Hill was commissioned by Andrew Carnegie to study the most successful people of the time. And he also studied like unsuccessful people. And so what he discovered is that one of the hallmarks of successful people is they make decisions quickly and change their mind seldomly. So they make decisions quickly and change their mind seldomly. And when Andrew Carnegie, actually, he had, he had uh, Napoleon Hill at his home for a weekend. He was, he, Napoleon Hill thought he was actually interviewing Andrew Carnegie for like a news article, but it was kind of the other way around. And so Andrew Carnegie had talked to other people to see if they would be the right ones to take on this project. And after the end of the weekend, he, he told Napoleon Hill, I have an offer for you. It's to, to basically you'd be spending your life. You might not see material gain from it. I'm not going to pay you for it, but I will pay your expenses. And I want you to come up with a, to discover the principles of success. And I'm going to give you introduction. So you'll actually get in the room with, you know, presidents and titans of industry to be able to interview these people and discover what are success principles, because he wanted more people to have access to this information. And so what Napoleon Hill did not know until after the fact is that once Andrew Carnegie made him this offer, he had a stopwatch under his desk set at 60 seconds. And he made him this offer and he put it on and Andrew, uh, Andrew um, Carnegie, was, yeah, well, Andrew Carnegie was like timing him. And so if Napoleon Hill had not said yes within 60 seconds, if he had said it at 61 seconds, he would not have had that opportunity because what, even what Andrew Carnegie knew was that successful people make decisions quickly, right? Have, right. have the information. So there you go. And it's been said that Napoleon Hill has created more millionaires than anybody else in the world through his work in his book, Think and Grow Rich. There you go. And I will say it is one of the first books that I read back in the day and I'm revisiting it today. So, you know, this, it is a seminal work in the, in the field. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a bunch of other people in, as well, but damn, he is one of the big daddies. Yeah. Right? yeah he's a big yeah. daddy. Yep. Bob Proctor studied his work every day, every yep. day, every yep. day. I was fortunate enough to be in a seminar with Bob Proctor back in 1991. Yeah. Long yeah. time. Oh, no, 90. 95 or 96. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. It was an amazing man. Yeah. He yeah. really was. So, okay. So I think that's a good note to end on. So the, you know, do it, just do it. Yeah. I'm going to go yeah. to the Nike. So, so here's logo. a question for you. What decision have you been putting off and you know, which one it is, you know, which one it is. And then what action are you going to take? That's so funny. We had that conversation just before we got on this call. So was I, just, yeah. I was just, <laughs> just making that decision for myself. So yeah. So we're all in alignment as per usual. So that's right. All right. All right. And that's all we have for this week, folks. Uh, don't forget that what you focus on is what expands. What you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. We'll see you next time. Boom, we're on the so street.
that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Show of the